Let's take this unexposed RAW file and give it this bright yellow autumn style using only Lightroom for the editing. Feel free to follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. If you're wondering why I'm working with an unexposed image like this, that's pretty simple. If I would take this image, for example, we would have all the details in the shadows, but the highlights are blown out. If I would try to bring down the highlights like that, then these would become super unnatural looking and that's not what we want. It's much easier to recover shadows. So let me show you how that's done because the first step is to just fix the exposure through the basic adjustments. I'm going to start this in the basic panel by changing the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This will just bring up the base saturation and I want the final image to look super vibrant with very strong autumn tones. Next up, I'm going to raise the exposure, which will help getting back all those vital details from the darker areas. I can push the exposure a lot. So let's go with something like this. The shadows are looking very, very nice with all the details we need. But again, the highlights at this point are clipping and that's an issue. But since we're using an underexposed draw file, what we can do in this case is to simply pull down the highlights and this will look much, much better than using the other shot I have shown earlier. So right away, by just adjusting the exposure and highlight slider, we do have a much better looking image. We can compare to before and you can already see a huge difference with much more details. But let's continue. Another thing I want to do is to bring up the shadows to get out more details from those deeper areas. I can also bring up the blacks. This will make the darker areas brighter. It will also reduce the overall contrast. Another benefit of that is it will create a kind of glowing, dreamy effect on top of everything, which works great with the sunlight in this image. Now to bring back a little bit of contrast, I'm going to pull up the whites. And as I pull up the whites, I'm making sure to check the histogram every now and then because I don't want to add any overexposure. You can see right at this point, the clipping starts to kick in right around the area where the sun is. That's okay because there is not much detail we are losing right here. Once we have adjusted the exposure like this, the next step for me is to work on the white balance. At the moment, it does feel kind of cold, which I don't like. I want to really bring out these autumn vibes, meaning I want this image to look a bit warm. I'm going to use the temperature slider and simply pull it up, introducing more warmth this way. All right. At the same time, we could use the tint slider and play around with it. At the moment, we do have some stronger green tones in this image. If I bring up the tint slider, we can reduce that and just make the autumn foliage a little stronger as well. So I'm going with something like this. I think that's looking pretty good. Then let me bring up the vibrance and the saturation. So we end up with a super colorful image like this. Finally, I do want to bring up the texture, which will help make the details of this image look a little bit sharper. And at the same time, I'm going to bring down the dehaze for a dreamy glowing effect on top. All right, and that's the result after just using basic adjustments. Again, let's compare to before and you can see it's a completely different image with much more details, overall looking much, much better. But of course, we can still do a lot more things to it. Right away, one thing that we will notice, especially in the dark areas, is there is a lot of noise because we pushed the sliders quite heavily and this was shot at ISO 1600. So noise will be a problem, but a problem that's actually super easily fixed. For that, head out of the basic panel and go into the details panel. Here, all we need to do is to click on denoise and Lightroom will do all the work for us. All right, looking much better already. One thing you can also notice along those edges where the contrast is rather high, we can see some chromatic aberration because I have brought the highlights down a bit. Sometimes this just happens. What we can do to kind of fix that is to go into the lens corrections and here click on remove chromatic aberration. And as you can see, this will kind of make it less visible. So that's a quick and easy solution to that. Next up, let's do a little bit of masking. Go ahead, open up the masking panel and I want to kind of pull the focus more on the center of the image. I'm doing this by making the sides of this image darker. I'm going to start using a linear gradient and I'm trying to cover kind of half of this tree. 
I'm also going to add another linear gradient right away. And I'm going to do the same on the other side, targeting the half of the other tree. I'm doing this because I want to create some kind of shadows on these trees. And all I need to do for that is to pull down the exposure, just like that. Having these darker sides will pull the viewer's eye more towards the center of the image, and it just looks super cool in my opinion. Then let's also work on this path leading into the image. I'm starting with another linear gradient, and I'm targeting the area that I want to make darker. So probably one third of this path up into the image. Of course, we only want to target this path. So I need to further modify this mask. I'm going to subject a linear gradient. And I'm basically taking out the side like this, just making sure I'm aligning it with this line right here. And I'm doing the same on the other side. Subject a linear gradient and target it like this. And just like that, we have the perfect mask for this. What I'm going to do is to bring down the shadows, making this area a lot darker. This has a super nice effect in my opinion. We can further tweak it by increasing the clarity, giving this area some more detail. I think that works quite nice. So let's bring it up like this. All right, beautiful. Another thing we can do is to target the blues of the sky. I, I really like the blue tones against these yellow tones. I think that's a great color contrast. I want to further improve that. I'm using a new mask. I'm going to use a color range mask. And with that color range mask, I'm clicking in a blue area right up in here. This will give us a proper selection, as you can see, nicely targeting the sky. If you want, we can bring up the refine slider, kind of making the edges a little smoother. And I'm going to subject a linear gradient because I don't want to affect the whole sky in the same way. I just want to affect the top part. So I'm going to subtract everything below that. And then I'm simply going to pull down the exposure. So maybe like this. And to make the blues more intense, I'm going to drop the temperature. Let's go with something like this. I think that looks great. Okay. I'm quite happy with the image already, but I do think Overall, it's still a bit too dark. I'm going to cover the whole image with a linear gradient. Then I'm going to subtract a linear gradient, taking out the left side like this, because right here, that's where the brightest areas are. This part doesn't need any more brightness. I'm also going to subtract the bottom part since I want the shadows in the bottom area to be darker. So maybe like this. With the remaining mask, what I'm going to do is to bring up the whites and this will help just adding some kind of more brilliance to this image, further pushing the contrast and the brightness in a very nice way. All right, finally, one more thing I wanna do. I want to add some shiny glow to the brighter areas on the left side. Therefore, I'm using a radial gradient and I'm covering all these bigger gaps between the trees where the light is coming through. I'm making sure I'm overlapping those trees on each side because I want the glow effect to be visible. So that should be fine. I'm going to add a, another radial gradient right away. I'm going to target the smaller gap right next to it. So something like this. Let's add another radial gradient for the light patch on the floor right here. And one more for the light patch in the back. Okay, I think that should be fine. I'm going to start by bringing up the blacks very, very gently. And I'm going to drop the dehaze as well. This will just add a very subtle glow effect to these areas. If you want, we can make it brighter by bringing up the exposure just a little bit like this. And if you're starting to lose colors in these areas because of these changes, what we can do is to use the temperature slider and just bring up the temperature recovering the colors in a very nice and subtle way. So that is looking great. I think that's it for the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before to after. And you can nicely see how the eye is pulled in towards the center because of these darker edges we have created through masks. Now we're almost done with this image. Just the color grading left to do. So let's go ahead, open up the color mixer. I want to work on the hue for a moment. Basically, what I want to do in the color mixer is to work on all these autumn colors. So orange, yellow, and maybe also the green tones. 
In the hue panel, what I'm going to do is to bring down the yellow hue, adding more orange tones to the image this way, as this will mostly target the tree foliage up in here, making it more orange. I think that looks great. I'm also going to bring down the orange hue just a little bit, adding some more red tones to this image, but that's looking great. Let's head over into the saturation tab. I do want to push the orange tones and I want to push the yellow tones to really make those colors pop. Nice. What we can do as well is to go into the luminance tab and work on the brightness of these autumn tones. We can bring up the orange tones to make them just a bit brighter and we can do the same for the yellow tones. We just need to be aware of clipping again, but a little bit is okay, I think. That's looking awesome, nice. Another thing we can do, some split toning in the color grading panel. In here, I just want to target the highlights. The highlights in this image are mostly these warm autumn tones and I wanna improve that through split toning. I'm going to set up the hue to a warm yellowish color tone. So somewhere around here and then I can simply play around with the saturation. You see, if I push it up quite a bit, we get this very intense orange look. I'm going to tone it down a little. I think somewhere around 15 should be fine for this scene. Beautiful. Finally, let me open up the calibration panel all the way down in Lightroom. And I'm just going to bring down the blue primary hue, which will further shift these warmer color tones in a very pleasing way. And I'm going to bring up the saturation. That is just something I do for most of my images because I think it looks super, super good. Okay, then one more thing, of course, the sharpening. So let's open up the details panel in here, bring down the radius all the way, then increase the details all the way up. We wanna apply some masking. So hold down the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider so you can see where the sharpening will be applied. That's looking okay. And I'm going to bring up the amount of sharpening and there we have the finished image with those bright yellow autumn tones. Actually, there's one more thing we can do and that is to get rid of these people in the distance. Therefore, we are going to go ahead, open up the remove tool up here and down below under distraction removal, click on people. Lightroom will create a selection for you. You see, it's looking pretty good and all you need to do after that is to click on remove and hopefully, as you can see, Lightroom will clean up this shot for you. I hope this little tutorial will be useful for your next autumn images. Let me know what you think of it. If it was helpful, maybe leave a comment, like and subscribe to this channel if you not already are. And thank you so much for watching this video.